awesome and joyful morning thus far. Today will prove to be different than anything I think I've done before as far as meditations are concerned because they said to me that the, hi Christopher, they said to me that the meditation would be about um, understanding the relationship between um, the DNA and the chakra systems and how they are interconnected that through uh, understanding the way the energy centers in the body work you uh, draw a correlation between the body uh, and its energy centers and the actual DNA which is the energy centers within the cell they are mirrors of each other I'm going to repeat that your DNA the DNA that's the microscopic DNA in your your uh, cellular structures is an exact mirror of the energy centers that are within the uh, spinal column or some think that they run up the central axis of the body but that they mirror each other and the energy matrix the way the energy works through the DNA and the way the energy works through the spine they're very similar they're saying the uh, they told me that this morning that the the energy that goes up the spine is likened unto a serpent, uh, two serpents entwined, which is also considered to be the, the uh, staff of Hermes, uh, has the two, surfaces in, in, uh, two serpents entwined up a central shaft, which is interesting enough, which is the medical symbol, is the shaft with the uh, two entwining serpents going up, and they meet at the top, and they, uh, they, they, face, they face each other at the very top. Well, it's interesting that DNA is is similar to that if you look at the double helix of a dna strand it's very similar and when they explained all this to me this morning and said you know what you need to do is you need to bring people into an awareness of the opposite energies that actually work to support and sustain each other in balance is what they said they said the the opposing energies are actually supporting energies and that what many people have called uh, up and down, uh, uh, left and right, are merely supporting aspects of one and the same thing, uh, but they appear to be different from a strictly physical standpoint. Like, so this came as last minute to me, and I'm still trying to assimilate and process all this information that they're downloading into me right now for this uh, meditation, because again, I've, I've done... Uh, similar things but not like this where where it's, it's at this point in a group this is fairly early in our training program but they insisted that this was something that was important at this point in time so i don't normally question i might get a little bit uncertain but i certainly don't doubt the uh, effectiveness of what i'm being given in terms of information to share with you hi anna hi everybody it's a very fascinating thing your dna uh, if you look at the way they understand it to be, and some call it Jacob's Ladder, I mean, Jacob's Ladder also refers to a movement of electrical energy up uh, a couple of rods, and Jacob's Ladder says it's an electrical charge that goes up. But it's virtually the same thing with the DNA, and it's essentially the same thing when you use pranic breathing or bring the Kundalini up. You're actually utilizing um, those opposing energies, those male and female energies, uh, several uh, months ago, I went through a meditation where I could actually feel and uh, the, the male energy going up one leg and the female energy going up the other leg of my body and then coming up and twisting around the spine and going at the top and meeting the top. It's interesting because from the perspective of energy, there is always male and female in our individualized finite state. That seems to be true within the construct of the energy, but in the construct of our, our uh, gender, there is male and there's female in separate forms. Um, so I'm in a male body, some are in female bodies. The, the inner elements of that energy are definitely transformative. They, they move, they cycle in, in opposition to each other energetically through the body. So I've got male energy and female energy within the form, and that's electrical in nature. Um, and again, I'm going to have to watch all this over again to see if it makes sense to, <laughs> sense to me, because as they talk all this stuff out, um, 
and I'm trying to analyze it at the same time to see if it makes sense. They keep telling me, don't try to make sense of what uh, your finite mind does not fully comprehend yet, which is another element to channeling that you learn to understand. There are things that you'll start to receive and information that starts to flow through you that you kind of go, what? And, and you got to learn to trust it. But also afterwards, I mean, you can analyze things afterwards. Why I review a lot of the videos that we do in the group just so that I get a clear understanding so I can consciously and independently review and integrate information. But DNA, imagine, imagine if you could rewrite your DNA. Just imagine that. You could, you could actually go in like a computer program and rewrite your DNA. Well, you can. You actually can do that now. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm living proof myself. My, my entire family, virtually every member of my family has allergies. I've got 14 siblings over, all over the country. And, and all of them have allergies. They all have allergies. And I remember as a kid watching, uh, we didn't all live together. We, had, we were spread out over three different uh, uh, family systems. And that's another story. And I remember watching my mother and my two sisters uh, just her eyes watering, playing. My sister would have to go with those needles, and it was insane. And I remember making a decision as a young child: I, I don't want to have that. I don't want that experience. I don't want that. I don't like that. I don't want to be like that. And it's almost as if at that age, when I made that decision, there was no resistance in me to it. And what happened is I've never had allergies. Um, I've never had uh, reactions to things that all my other siblings do, whether they're from my immediate family system or from the other, the other uh, three family systems that we're part of. If one, ch if one can change uh, by decision an effect in their life, is it possible that you could look at some of the effects in your life for yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and make a different choice? I know my choice was made from a place of, uh, um, uh, what I, was, I wouldn't say fear, I would say it from certainty. I made it from a place of certainty. I knew that I was not going to want to experience that, that I was watching them go through. It was from a place of certainty that I made that decision. And if I look back and try to access the feeling that I had, it was really like, it was literally like I was pushing that away. It was like I was pushing that reality away from me. It was theirs, not mine. So I took ownership of a reality. And again, I'm analyzing from the perspective I'm in right now, an alteration that was made by me as a, in, a, in a child's body, um, you know, close to almost, almost uh, 55 years ago, that, that changed the course of my life. And so each of us has that capability to decide. You know, you may have allergies, you may have uh, uh, physical diseases, and it is now possible, and they're scientifically proving that DNA can be changed. Now, if the DNA in the cells of our body mirrors the electrical flow or the kundalini, this, the, the rise of the kundalini through the spine, if they are mirrors of each other, then it stands to reason that if the quality of the energy in one or the other is structured a certain way, then it will have, I believe, a sympathetic effect on 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 the other. We're gonna get into the meditation shortly. I, I, they're just telling me to put all this out so the vibration of the information is imparted to your subconscious mind because some of you may not be able to fully grasp the ideations of the information being presented from a, a conscious linguistic standpoint of view, but your subconscious mind receives the fullness of all the frequencies that we're transmitting to you at any given point in time. And so we don't have much concern about whether or not you will understand this or not, but we do recognize the value of ensuring that we impart the fullness of our message to you. So if the function of your uh, Kundalini energy breathing, bringing up that energy, is in perfect uh, integrity, if it is complete and whole and felt and experienced in fullness, then it stands to reason that it will have an effect on the DNA in the biological uh, cells, in the smaller systems of the form. 
Now, we would say to you, too, that even within the DNA are smaller structures and substructures that mirror this exact same process. Just the same way as the movement of energy around specific energy centers in the body is toroidal, everything that has a moving dynamic flow of energy also generates these toroidal fields. And the um, in fact, Metatron coming in here is saying, it's important to understand that the geometric and mathematical relationship between all energies is um, based on an infinitude of possibilities and constructs and realities that a finite mind cannot comprehend, but which we have some limited knowledge of its fullness as it relates to human experience and how we can affect change in this dimension through the use of movements of energy and symbols of mathematics and uh, geometry, the use of geometry in altering structures and energy, which will not, of course, be the venue of today, but will, in fact, uh, be at a later date and time. Um, yeah, he's stressing very much there is a direct relationship between structures of matter and mathematics and geometry that fit together, and that the uh, he's saying I'm, he's trying to find the language to say you can take one symbol or one energy construct. Um, okay, he's saying if you look at the way a DNA helix is shaped. He's saying, although you only see the one shape, that shape also generates other shapes based on its energy configuration. And likewise, within that shape are a multitude of uh, different configurations of energy that, that one cannot comprehend necessarily with a finite mind, but one can know when, when not left to interpretation, but left, one is left to experience that which is being experienced. Then knowing comes into play versus analysis, which breaks down the complexity of information to a very simple level that doesn't give one a full understanding of the entire meaning of information provided by a specific thing of time and space. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to listen to this again. <laughs> he's laughing at me because I'm, I'm realizing, I'm hearing what he's saying, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of that, which I, I, um, I get... I, a flavor of. It's like trying to explain a Rubik's cube to a two-year-old and the concept of how to you move all those squares all over the place and get them to, to line up, uh, even though it's all jumbled up, and to try and see a two-year-old figure that out. It's very difficult. He says it's kind of like that for me right now. He said, I'm try like a two-year-old trying to figure out a level of complexity that, that although in practical use it's extremely simple for the, from the perspective of intellectual comprehension, is uh, quite difficult. The meditation today is again on accessing and utilizing and feeling the connection between that which is finite and that which is infinite, the macro and the micro, and understanding that they are not separate elements of consciousness, but unified aspects of one and the same thing that only through the process of comparison can you think are different. Um, and so we're going to start in just a moment. Um, so we advise you to get yourselves comfortable and get relaxed and drink some water and <laughs> Wow. Okay, at the end of this meditation, there will be questions. Um, Okay, that's what they're telling me, <laughs> and uh, and we will address them at that point in time. So please make yourself comfortable, and if you can, place your feet flat on the ground. If you are lying down, they're saying make certain that you feel the connection between the back side of your body and the, um, the earth, the electrical connection between your form and the earth are very important um, because there's uh, one, two, they're saying there's one, there's two, three, there's four components to this meditation. And the first component they're saying is going to be the drawing up of 
male energy from the earth through one leg and to bring that energy up and get it moving through. The second component will bring up the female element of energy through the opposite leg and the third element will be integrating those two elements as they meet in the top of the system and then allowing the energy that happens at that point to be transferred down to the DNA so that the uh, biological system that you are in right now can respond uh, to these uh, intentional alterations in the energies that you're going to be working with shortly. Um, so it would be left to right, okay. They're also telling me how to do it, so that's another thing. Uh, so just take a deep breath and get yourself centered in. Now and just take a deep breath and bring yourself fully into this present moment. Just let your body settle into the present moment. And take another slow deep breath. As you exhale, let yourself sink down to the soles of your feet. As you exhale, move your awareness down to the soles of your feet. And just become aware of the sensations at the soles of your feet at this moment. Notice if any other parts of your body are responding to the sensations you feel in the soles of your feet. Now I want you to imagine that you can draw energy up through your left leg with a single breath, draw energy up through your left leg to your heart center. And let that energy rest in your heart center. And then exhale. and move your awareness back down to the soles of your feet. Notice if there's any difference there now. Now breathe in again, up through the left leg, all the way to the heart center. Allow it to rest in the heart center. And as you exhale, move your awareness back down to the soles of your feet. Now breathe in and draw energy up through your right leg, all the way to your heart center. And let it rest there. And as you exhale, move your awareness back down to the soles of your feet. A 
Again, now draw energy up through the right leg to the heart center as you breathe in. that energy rest there. And as you exhale, move your awareness back down to the soles of your feet. And just feel for a moment the energy at the soles of your feet. This time when you take a breath in, I want you to draw energy up through both legs to the heart center. And as you exhale, move your awareness back down to the soles of your feet. Feel the energy at the soles of your feet. Take another breath and breathe the energy up both legs to the heart center. And as you exhale, allow that energy to rise up to the top of your head. And just feel how the energy is at the top of your head. Notice the feelings of the energy on the left side of your body. Now notice the feelings on the right side of your body. And notice how those feelings meet in the middle of your body. Breathe deeply now. Allow these feelings combined to penetrate into every cell of your body as you breathe in.
Just feel that feeling. Feel, don't think. Now imagine on your next breath, you're drawing up even more energy through both legs to the top of your head. Draw it up. Feel the vibration of the energy. Feel how all the cells in your body are responding to this energy. Allow this energy to go where your body needs it most. Breathe this energy in deeply. Breathe it into the marrow of your bones. Breathe the energy into the marrow of your bones. And as you exhale, allow this energy to move through all of the organs in your body. Feel yourself as the vibration of this energy. Now breathe deeply and as you do, expand this energy to fill the room that your body's in at this time. As you exhale, expand it out further. Move your awareness to your heart center and feel Feel the connection from your heart center to the sun and the earth. Sense and feel the movement of the energy up through your left side and your right side.
and we want you to make this statement in your mind at this time. Love is what I am. Love is what I am. And feel how those words vibrate in the cells of your body. Think or speak that phrase again and feel how the energy in the room vibrates with that statement. Love is what I am. If there's any place space or time within you or around you that needs to feel this energy speak this phrase into that place love is what i am if there's any problem or concern speak that phrase to the problem or concern Love is what I am. Just feel, don't think. Love is what you are. Allow this vibration to continue adjusting and altering your biology and the world around you as it will. You don't have to think about how it does it. Just allow it. Go deeper into your heart now. Deep inside your heart center. Feel how you are being in there. Feel your being in your heart center. And just observe the way energy is moving through and around your body at this time from that perspective. Breathe deeply now. 
in the present moment. And center your awareness back here and now very gently. Breathe yourself back into this time and space, but bring the full feeling of the experience with you into the present moment. Breathe your full awareness, the feeling, into this present moment. And as you gently open your eyes and bring yourself into this present moment, notice the quality of the feeling in your body. And make note on how it's different now versus before you started. We ask you to make that distinction so that your mind cannot alter the shift in your experience as a result of your focus. For we suggest to you that although these meditations are guided, that it is your willingness to focus that generates the results that you're individually experiencing or not experiencing but it is your focus, your willingness to participate in the process that you are in that allows you to initiate the differences in your experience during this short period of time. But we would also say to you that these differences and changes in your experience can be amplified greatly. So if you are feeling a state of bliss or ecstasy at this time, or a state of great peace or contentment, that we would suggest to you that this emotional state is not localized to what your immediate experience is, but can be expanded and extended to all the relative points of time and space in which you will engage your awareness. Uh, whether that be through the engagement of your awareness moving it out of the body or engaging your awareness when you move the body, you can bring this uh, energy and put this energy to all points of time and space simultaneously and thereby create a reality that's generated by the precise intention of your willingness to engage in this process consciously and deliberately. The level of complexity will get relatively simple even though the information and understanding will get more complex. Your awareness of it from the perspective of experiential knowing will get simpler. You will know that you know, although of course your mind will want to think about why it knows what it knows and what it knows what it knows and how it knows it and what that means, and that's okay. If you can make the distinction between yourself as the analyzer and the um, one observing the analysis, you will place yourself in a much more effective position for integrating this information into your uh, full expression without the limitations of your mind being imposed upon you. Now we know that your DNA has been shifted. Let's see if you know. So we will take some questions. Hello, Elena. Hello, Lorraine. Lisa. Hi, Joe. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. I'm glad you made it. Let's see who we can bring on today, too. We'll bring somebody on shortly as well. In fact, that might be the best thing to do. Let's see. Here's somewhere I haven't seen for a while. Be brave. <laughs> Be brave. Well, so I'm going to just bring somebody on and we'll, we'll talk about the way the energy worked for you and the process worked for you and what your experience of it is and share that with the group. Uh, also, in sharing your experience with the people, you have to you, you re uh, you uh, remind your body, you remind your consciousness to, to remember that which you've experienced as you know it to be. Because um, I know oftentimes when I come out of an altered state of consciousness, if I don't 
I don't bring that state back with me. I leave something behind, then my mind tries to figure out what was that, and all of a sudden you find your mind going, oh, I don't remember, and you don't want that to happen. And if you think you have fallen asleep during this process, I can assure you, you did not fall asleep. You simply moved your awareness out of your body, your soul awareness, out of the body to experience this at that level, and then came back. Um, but whatever it is, it's all good. You'll always receive it and get it at the level you need to. Okay. No worries. No expectations. Um, let's see. There we go. Let's see how this works. Try you again. No, I want that. <laughs> Yeah, today was supposed to be originally a uh, card reading with uh, Miriam. Hi, Anita. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm terrific. Thank you for asking. How was that meditation for you? Oh, it was great. I loved it. <laughs> Tell me what you noticed when you, when you brought the energy up the left leg first. What did that feel like when it, when it came up and went to heart center? It was very subtle on my left leg as opposed to my right leg. My right leg seemed to be a stronger um, feeling, but it was mm -hmm. a very gentle feeling coming up my left leg. Isn't that interesting? Because uh, you know, as you know, the left side of the body is controlled by the right cerebral hemisphere, which is the feminine part of the, the brain. Right. Interesting. So, so that makes perfect sense. And of course, the le right leg is controlled by the left side of the brain, which is the very masculine originative thought and thinking part of the brain. So it is mm -hmm. a very massive. It's interesting that you were able to, to note that distinction. When, when they both met in your heart, what did you feel? Uh, it felt really, it, it really blended together. Like, I don't know, it just felt like it was swirling together quite a bit in the heart area. So it mm -hmm. felt really, uh, um, I guess, the interaction between was really good. Like it, it seemed like it gelled well between the two. Mm. And when the, then when you brought it from the heart center up to just above the head, what did you experience just near the top of your head? The first time I brought it up to the top of the head, I didn't feel it as much. It was subtle, but later on when I t tried again, it's, it felt like, I don't know. All I could think of is like, uh, in my mind's eye, I could almost see like swirling lights or something above my head. Yeah. That kind of idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, an and yeah, that's what it felt like. It, it just seemed to be, that's what's coming into my mind's eye is that swirling lights. Yeah. Now the swirling lights were they were they were they swirling like that sort of a swirl like a like a circular motion or was it like an entwining motion? Can you can you discern that? Uh, I think it was sort of they they were coming around I guess more, yeah. Right. Is this the first time you've experienced energy quite this way? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. When 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 you were asked to breathe it into the marrow of your bones, what did you feel in the marrow? Oh, it felt really good. <laughs> it felt really good. Yeah. I and think they were very how? happy. <laughs> yeah. they, they always are. Because that part of our body really rarely gets attention, right? Yeah. You know, the, most people don't realize that their organs feel and react and respond to every thought we think and every feeling we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when we change how we interact with it, it's like a little puppy dog, it responds differently. When oh, you, yeah. uh, I when you... Go ahead. I still feel it, actually. I still feel you know, it. When you, when you exhale and expand that feeling out through all the organs, what happened? How did you feel your organs responding? Oh, they liked it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, yeah, it was a lot of, I, I just felt really vibrating. Yeah. Are you everywhere. still feeling that right now? 
Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. when, you when you expanded that feeling out into the space of the room around you, what did you feel in the space around you? And what do you feel in the space around you right now? Uh, it feels really positive. It just feels really, I don't know, joyful, I guess, happy. Mm. Is there, is, there, is, there a, uh, is there a gentle feeling to it as well? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And if you could, if you could uh, let this whole experience be articulated into a phrase or an idea of what it means, what would that be for us, for you to communicate that to us as a, as a, as a knowing of what that meant or means? Oh, uh, hmm. I don't know, we are all love or something like that. That's a good one. Is that, when you say that, we are all love, how do you feel? Really good. So that would, yeah. seem to ring, that would seem to ring true. Is there anything else that you feel is connected to that experience? Uh, well, actually, the word connection seems to be a really good one too because everything is connecting as well we are love and everything is connecting that's beautiful yeah i i, I think I'm, I'm is there anything else that you would add to that if you could communicate that as a message to me what would that message be um uh hmm Connect to love? I'll take that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, that, it's okay. It's normal for your mind to question what your heart tries to speak because your mind is usually used to being in control. Oh, yeah. I'm a control but, freak, so that's understandable. But I, that's, that's a great step. It's an amazing step because you communicated me connecting in love. Mm -hmm. Those are really, you know, connecting love. That's what I get from that. Connecting love. That's the message you, I got from you in saying that, that I need mm -hmm. to connect to love for. And um, when you say, if you say, if you say, were to say that phrase, connect to love more, what do you feel? I feel really good. I feel everything's vibrating well around me. Wonderful. It's, yeah. um, I, I went through a process when, when, I, when I was in, in my early stages of channeling where I literally was afraid to say what was coming in because I wasn't sure if I should believe it or not. <laughs> because it, it, and that, that was just the way my ego approached it because I used to love being in control of things all the time, right? And as I surrendered that control to this, this otherness that felt really good, but I'd never felt it allowed it in my life before as I started to allow it. And, and I started to see evidence that it wasn't going to do me harm. It wasn't going to do others harm. It was actually a very beautiful, kind and loving uh, spirit that was uh, seeking to come through me, I started to surrender more to trust. Uh, and I'm not there 100%, I'd say I'm about 70% there, but I still have moments like that where I'm going, really like today, when they asked me to come, when they asked me to come on and do this today, and, I, and, and it, was, it was like last minute, I'm going, okay, DNA, uh, energy centers, wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, and you start to go to a place where you start to surrender to this. I mean, why would a loving vibration cause you any harm? I agree, yes. And so yeah. learning to allow, and it sounds like you're, you're already crossing that threshold of learning to allow that which is evidently good to express for you. And the truth it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anita, I thank you for coming on. I'm gonna bring somebody else on and give them a chance to um, uh, share with us what their experience was too. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. You're welcome. Dude. Bye, hon. Wow. Love. Connecting through love. I love connecting through love. Connecting. Hi, John. Good to see you. Lorraine, if I haven't said hello to you, it's, it's not that I don't want to. It's that I haven't seen your name and you probably scrolled up the list somewhere. Yes, it's pretty fascinating to understand that you are not this body that you are in. Hi, 
Oh, Gloria. <laughs> Hi, it's hard to hear because I took a break at work to come outside to do everything. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so amazing. Thank you so much. I, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll make this, I'll make, how do you feel right now? Did you try to do that meditation while you were in there? I took my break to do the meditation. And I just feel, well, you know me, and you know what I've had to overcome, and you know how I'm a crier, but I'm just like, ooh, full of love. When you brought the energy up through your left leg to your heart center the first time, what did you feel in your heart? In my heart, I felt, um, uh, my heart always speeds up whenever I do energy work. So whenever I brought it up, it swirled up through the left side. And for me, the left side was stronger than the right side. Yes. Um, yes. So it swirled up into my heart center and it just expanded and it was like um, electrical honey, if that makes sense. I, oh, I, I, I'm getting goosebumps for that. They're saying, yes, that's exactly what it was. It's like electrical honey. Yeah. Honey, <laughs> it's like electrical honey, honey. Um, uh, I'm getting shivered. The energy is pouring in right now. If you're saying that, the um, when it came up to the uh, uh, the right leg and went to the heart center, what was the difference? And I do appreciate you noting the difference to, between the two. It's the reverse of what Anita had. It was um, it wasn't as strong. It was more gentle, and it was just like a flow. It didn't swirl to me on the right side as fast as it did on the left side, but it was like a twist. And when it got to the to the top, it was like a a swirling dance for me is what it felt like. Yes. And just the opening. Yes. Now, now with that, with that feeling and that opening, the swirl. What was the feeling of that? Because that's the, that's how your brain remembers the sensation. But what did it feel like? Um, that universal love source feeling. That's what it felt like for me. Yeah. Wonderful. Where you're, you're just filled with love. <laughs> okay. And when, when you were asked to breathe it deep into the marrow of your bones, what did you feel inside the bones? Um, like there was little hearts, just like my DNA had become little hearts everywhere. Golden hearts. You're, you're, you're quite emotional right now, eh? I can feel that. You're blissed yeah. right out. You're totally blissed oh, yeah. out. It's awesome. Yeah. When you, uh, when you expanded it out, out to take fill the room that you were in, uh, what did that feel like in the space around you? Um, it just, all of it felt just so much love, just, and it like covered everything. And then whenever you said, and exhale and expand it out further, I just envisioned it going out further and then I felt it just, it was very powerful. I would be curious to, see, to know how other, if you notice differences in the people around you today at work, after doing that, I will. If, I most definitely will <laughs> to let you know. <laughs> if you know, if you notice, it, yeah, make a note and post it on the wall so people can see. Because I know that when we start working with energy like this, we literally affect time, space, and matter in a much greater realm and sphere of responsibility than what we normally think we can. Most people are localized to their body, but when you realize, well, wait a minute, I can affect that person across the street carrying the dog. It, it changes how our level of responsibility is for ourselves and for the planet and our, our fellow humans. Yes. But um, if you could, if, if everything you experience could be translated into a phrase that you would have to say to me, or something you were going to say to me, what would that be? Your body is love, because that's what I felt. It was just, and I really, especially with everything I've been going through, you know, um, I'm so grateful to you and them for bringing this meditation through because it brought me right back into that space of, you know, of the present moment. And like you said, you know, whenever you're in the present, that's when you become Buddha-like. And it was just, oh, I'm such a crier and so emotional, but it's just no, no, overpowering no, love energy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's not, that's not crying. That's love just leaking out through your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the masters, the beings, they say, we love you. We adore you. We are with you. Fear nothing. Fear nothing. Love all. Love all. As you are. As you are. And thank you for that message for me. And, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to, to come and share that with us all. Thank you for doing that. There's a little white butterfly dancing around in front of me. 
<laughs> Thank you so okay, much. Joe, you're welcome, honey. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. It's interesting to note that the change of the intensity of the energy from Anita to Joe, that with the other one, it was the opposite. Because one side of our body is femininely dominated energy. The opposite side of our body is uh, predominantly male generated energy. Yet when we get to a place where we generate a synthesis of a blending, a proper blending of those two energies, then we can create a, a what's called balance in the body. Um, and we'll get into that at another point in time. They're telling me not right now, so I won't go any further than that. So, but they want me to bring one more person on because it's always good to have another viewpoint. Um, I would love to bring John on, but he doesn't seem to have his uh, smartphone with him. Oh, what have we got here? Doc. It's uh, interesting. So we've had two females, and I'm going to bring um, Doc on right now because it's a male process and perspective for him. And it's interesting to see what that difference and distinctions might be because there will definitely be some, something different as there is from one to another anyway. Um, so hopefully he can come on. I will also, if you want to put questions up on, on the uh, comment section, I'll, I'll address some of those as well. I agree, Elena. I agree. Uh, Joe has such beautiful energy. And all of you do. Like, we're all in this because of the resonance, the connectivity uh, of our souls and our divine teams to a, to a purpose of manifesting a different kind of experience here. Hi, Doc. How are you? Hi. I've just got in the house. So I'm so sorry. I've missed most of the session. Oh, that, that, that's quite okay. I'm just grateful that you had a chance to come on. I don't know what, what part of the session did you catch? Uh, literally about the last two minutes. <laughs> <It's> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really hope, I hope you watch the replay because I think you'll find it very enlightening. Um, I said, yeah, I, was so, yeah, I, was, I was so rushing to try to get home, but I just couldn't get back in time to uh, catch this. No so worries. They don't, they don't want you to rush. There's no need to rush. For in, in eternity, you don't have to rush. True. Well, yeah, there it is. I'm so sorry. I mean, I would like to help you out, but I, I just, I'm just oh, not no, in the right no, you are. You, you <laughs> totally are. Like I said, um, your, your, your excitement and enthusiasm are being translated through to me very quickly, and I love that. I'm really grateful we got a Thank chance you. to come on today. And Same here. Everything Same here. happens in the order that it's intended to. And sure. always, from my perspective, always happens from a higher order. Um, and I surrender yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, we find that... Um, Synchronicity is such a big part of our lives. Um, yes. That the uh, um, the issue of, uh, I mean, just simple things like rushing, um, you, you still get to the same place and you still get stuff done. It just you just need to let go and just let let your let the path follow, open up in front of you. Then it all works out. Yeah, yeah. It always does. Uh, just I also want to address your question. You've been inquiring about the one or two course. All of the information for the course. Will be. I'll yeah. post it once on the group wall uh, later this afternoon. All the details of the course will be there. Okay, that's fine. And uh, um, if anybody, yeah, anybody's it's, interested, it's, register, they can go to the website. Yeah, I just want to tell you. Um, I mean, I'm sure other people have said this anyway, but really, the stuff you're doing is just so fabulous. It's just absolutely mind blowing what's going on here. And um, the uh, the thing that um, I've seen happen with my wife and other people around her you're doing in a, in, a, in a different route, but actually ticking all the same boxes. And it's just, it's just a real pleasure to be able to join this, honestly. I'm truly honored. The honor's all mine, I can assure you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. And thanks to our friends upstairs as well, so. Oh yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing this without them. You know, it's, it, it, and I wouldn't be doing this without all of you guys too, because it is a team effort. It really, really is. True, and, um, true. Again, I, I thank you for your interest and your participation is, is immeasurably wonderful. I, I really appreciate it. The, the thing I just wanted to leave with you, because uh, I realize it's almost an hour now, is um, uh, many years ago, tree huggers were denigrated as being lunatics and idiots. And um, 
there are yourself and other people who do channeling and, and it's blindingly obvious to the people who are open to the idea that there's something more than just a, a coincidence of what's going on. And the thing I'd just like to ask you, maybe not for now, maybe for later, is how we sort of get this out to the broader public in different ways and the lessons you've learned and that we can learn from others. Uh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay. I'm not just we're now between us. Right now. Talking. Yeah. Right now, every yeah. time we do one, every time we do one of these transmissions, every time they come through like this, every time we we articulate and express our love, every time we articulate our, our sense of compassion for humanity, our love for other life, we are doing it. Yeah, it's, it's just that um, the thing I've noticed in other areas is that the people who are at the leading edge of thinking get it. The people who are a little bit further down the line, um, they sort of get it, but they need a bit of teaching. But yeah. to the great unwashed, it's a different message and it's a different way of packaging it. And I don't quite, I haven't thought enough about how we can repackage this to make this accessible to the greatest of all the population. Well, we're working on that now. Like why, why, we designed these, uh, why they had us design these courses and why we put them together the way we have and why we just flow with it because they, yeah. they're the architects and we're, sure. we're you know, their assistants, right? But yeah, it's sure. a great question and we, we are, we're all working on that. Any, any suggestions or ideas you have, Doc, about well, how you think that might look, I'd be more than happy to uh, having you okay. offer some suggestions up. Well, um, I don't know whether now's the right time. And tell I me agree. if it's not happy. But if it is at a later time, we could sort of collectively and individually put our thinking heads together with others. I've got some examples which, um, which I can share with you of how thinking has shifted within populations. Um, okay. and, and I'm not saying you know, we haven't got enough time. It's really a much bigger discussion, but it's something which um, yourselves and colleagues and friends may want to consider because I just think it's a, a fabulous way of, of, uh, of getting out. I mean, there's so much here. It's just incredible. It really is. I'll, I'll, re I'll reach out to you later on today, Doc, and we can talk yeah, sure. a bit further about this if that's okay with you. Yes, by all means. I've got a, a philosophy class a bit later on this evening, but just what, just do it through FaceTime, through, you know, the little messenger thing. And uh, I'll be home probably, probably about 10 o'clock and then after that I'll be free, okay? Terrific, Doc. Have a wonderful day and thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Not at all. Thank you for the invite. Okay, love to all. Much bye love. Now. Much love. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. How are we doing time-wise here? Oh, we've gone by the hour. Excuse me, let me just... Uh... Reverse my lens around for showing up today. And uh, please share your experience of what happened for you on in the comment section. I would really love to read it and know it. And it, the feedback that we get uh, inspires us. And we hope that you're being inspired too. I know I'm always inspired by my team. I'm, I wouldn't be doing this without them. And, and some of the ideas they come up with are pretty, pretty amazing. And, and when you start to live life from the perspective of the unexpected being amazing, of what is unknown being exciting, you move into a different realm of being that allows you to take risks that aren't risky, that allows you to venture and unpackage who you truly are through your body into this world and give this earth and the beings on it what is really needed here. Anyway, I want to say love to all of you and thank you for coming on and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.